Well, welcome everybody to Tech Nation's Back on Track. It's our first in 2022. For the past year, I've been speaking to a number of tech leaders and innovators and disruptors, all on topics of national and global importance. Today, we have one of those topics for you, global supply chain issues and the impact on Canada. And we have an incredible leader with us today, Sandra Pupitello, who's the co-founder of Reshoring Canada, a nonpartisan new organization that's really focusing on supply chain modernization. So the area I want to focus on, get a little more detail and, and dig into is Reshoring Canada. It's po possibly a term that Canadians might not be that familiar with. So if you could, Sandra, tell us a little bit about what that means for Canadians and what the organization really is looking to address. It sort of became a, a larger name during the last recession in 0809, where uh, we started talking about, you know, why are where are our jobs going? And people had a view that we were shedding jobs to different parts of the world for price, and all of a sudden we we are suffering as a result of that. We should be bringing all of this work back home. So in that regard, it had a, sort of a nativist connotation. For, for me, reshoring isn't about being nativist. I'm totally pro-trade as a former trade minister. Um, that's what we did. And our economy is based on trade. So we certainly want trade. What we do think is that companies, especially small and medium-sized businesses, need to have a rethink over how are they getting their parts in? Where are their materials coming from? Is there an easier, better, and more economical way? Because what they thought was appropriate in the 80s the whole world has changed since then. And we thought that now is a really good time to start revisiting some of those price points, methods, routes, routing, uh, to say, am I doing this in the best way as a business? And the, I think that that allows for a lot more opportunity with the way Canada automates, which really is your bailiwick here. Um, I think there's huge opportunity for Canadian businesses and they've just not looked before, but this crisis is going to make them look. It's certainly something that's impacting all of us. I know that Reshoring Canada has done, I think, one of the first ever surveys of the impact of the global supply chain with Canadian business leaders. I think you had 40% of your leaders in the C-level or CEOs responding to some of the impacts. So could you give us some of the highlights of what Canadian business leaders are saying about this issue? So we went through maybe 10 or 12 different industry associations, really, really a, 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 quite the table that we set for talking to different types of business in Canada. And we came up with some startling information that for one, 40% of the people who actually did the survey to respond to it were in the C-suite, which never happens. It's usually relegated to somebody. And that really speaks to how important and critical it is, not just to the purchasing or procurement people, but right up the chain in the company. So it's hitting their balance sheet already, right? Uh, and then the other thing that we learned was it is systematic. It is something that's been ongoing. And more interesting is the top three continuous supply chain issues. So it's not just about what's happening now because of the pandemic, but rather what's been going on for quite some time. Number one, cost and stability. Number two, logistics. And number three, capacity restra restraints. But more importantly, how long has it been going on? So when you see all those different color bars and how far out they are, well past the 15 and 20% is that they're happening every few years, they're happening annually, they're happening quarterly. So interestingly, what the pandemic did for us was it took every single problem in the world and it put it on our plate right now, today, all at the same time. But anybody who knows manufacturing knows that independently, these issues have confounded us. Maybe it was the tsunami that hit in Tokyo and knocked out their nuclear uh, plants. And, and that had a whole series of events that happened with a particular sector. Or it was the Texas snowstorm that all of a sudden parts couldn't come out of that place. And we didn't realize, wow, a lot of things are impacted by people not being able to move around Texas for those few days when snow hit. So the difference today was that the pandemic and its impact had everything happen on all continents all at the same time. And throw in there the Suez Canal being stopped up. That wasn't pandemic. That was climate change with massive sandstorms that actually shut the, the, the Suez Canal and that ship got stuck as a result. 
that's going to happen again. Maybe not this year, but certainly climate change is having this type of, 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 uh, of impact. And interestingly, I guess, is that if you realize that every few years or every other year or twice a year, you're going to be impacted by some kind of a supply chain issue, that's not pandemic related. That is ongoing and the kind of risk that you need to now need to start working into your plan. You need to double down. You need to have, you know, other options. Uh, you got plan A, plan B, plan C, and actually have to invoke them and see that they work. So for businesses, um, that's a lot more planning and a lot more work. And it's not just sort of a one every hundred year storm because we're seeing with our own, especially in Windsor, for example, flooded basements. It's not one in every, every hundred year storm. It's like one every five years. So we know the world is changing. And what the pandemic did was really focus our attention because it, this isn't new. It's happened a long time. So I'd like to know your thoughts, particularly with your deep expertise as a government leader for decades, how and how should we be working together perhaps to influence and educate the government and what areas would you recommend but in other words how can your expertise help us actually have a difference in influencing because we're we're all feeling like the time is now but if we go back to that survey and maybe what we should be doing is sending a lot of this info around supply diversification 77 percent of the people that responded suggested that diversification of their supply chain was the solution that they felt they needed to go to, which is exactly, Angela, what you said. So what's government's role now in assisting with that kind of information? Now, if you're a company as large as Martin Rea, uh, you may not need the assistance of government to figure that out. But if you're a medium-sized, small company, I think that's when government can be tremendously helpful. So suggesting what they can do, because I think you know our, our departments around the world are fantastic. Um, and their ministry that knows the business here in Canada. And sometimes it's a matter of figuring out how do you share information to be the most useful for companies who don't have the bandwidth to figure out what other options they could have in supply diversification. When we asked, what was the number one, what was the number one item? Now, remember, we focused on manufacturing. They've got the longest and largest supply chain. And steel was the number one answer. Steel followed by plastics, followed by, you guessed it, electronics. And so what does that mean? What does that tell us? Uh, what do you do to backstop those kinds of industries to perhaps help Canadian companies cope with that? Infrastructure and how we can better use infrastructure for logistics, which was, a, a, you know, the number two issue for everybody. Um, are we better utilizing our port system? Can we better integrate that with the balance of transportation? So how are the ports integrated with our rail, integrated with our road? Um, is there more infrastructure that we need to build specifically for this purpose? And today, as I started saying, you can actually calculate the opportunity cost lost because we didn't have it during the pandemic. So you know that an, an, an investment of whatever the billions are going to be, you can tell what the influence of that would be. So I think governments are actually in a better place today to know, well, if I've got to build this out or if I have to change this, I actually know that I'm going to have a positive impact on business. Well, that's really interesting. And it, it kind of takes me to an area we've had success in the last couple of years um, working with the government, Sandra, and that was it, it aligns with supply chain. It aligns with buying local in terms of national local. Um, we set up and were able to have uh, Shared Services Canada and a federal department work with us to help connect the dots between technology companies across Canada and procurement opportunities with big government. We've since expanded that to small tech and big tech supply chains. And, it, you know, I really think that that is an important strategy nationally from many different aspects that we start connecting are smaller medium enterprises with the bigger opportunities, whether it's government, whether it's business, because that's all part of the supply chain creation. And I know when you and I spoke last, you were working on establishing something like we've done a bit of a digital marketplace or a marketplace that could connect the dots to increase diversity in, in supply chains. Can you talk a little bit about what Reshoring Canada is doing in terms of that kind of priority? 
Well, we actually think that for us, that's going to be a little bit down the road because initially we've got to sort out that how as a solution, we can get information to our businesses about what the true costs are by comparison to somewhere else. And that's really what our first focus will be. But as people start coming to our site to discover that, they're going to automatically ask the next question. Okay, so if it's going to be better to do it here, where would I go? Hence that next piece of info that we want to be sure that we can provide them. And we think uh, wherever you are in the country, if you know you can go to one site and get all of that information, then we think that's actually a very good way to help local business um, and, and make it cost effective for them as well, right? Um, I think a lot of people are getting involved in this space and realizing that information is key. And that's certainly what's behind your industry. Um, they have to have data in their hand and they have to be able to analyze data quickly. Um, what's really interesting to me is that we went to, for example, the University of Windsor's business school, and we had their supply chain students helping us do these surveys because we had to get, you know, broadly out to companies. So I talked to the professor there who teaches classes for supply chain. And because it's like everything's turned on its head. What if you were the supply chain guy in the company, your primary focus is how do we get this at the most economical, best price, best quality, et cetera. It's almost opposite that in some instances because they need to understand political risk, natural disaster risk, logistical risk, what if it doesn't show up? So there's elements that they now have to embed in their formula for how should a company develop supply chain. And they need to rely on it. I can't imagine that one company with one person responsible for procurement is going to sit back and say, now, how can I solve the geopolitical risk of dealing with, with an Asian country, for example? So that's where the government steps in and says, okay, whether they're helping companies score political risk based on their experiences or whether they are there assisting with what alternatives can be in terms of other countries, because really for businesses, they still have to worry about the bottom line. They're not going to start creating work that is ineffective and do it in Canada when they know there's somewhere else in the world that they can do it better. Maybe it's not the same country, but it still may be coming from somewhere else. So information is going to be the key, uh, again, to guide them to that path. That kind of leads me to my last question or last kind of discussion point. It's a call to action. Um, when you know you've known Tech Nation for a number of years and you're building and developing and establishing a phenomenal organization around reshoring Canada, what would a call to action be for organizations like ours to work together? What should we be looking to achieve in the next 12 to 18 months so we can start making a difference? Reaching into your organization for the expertise that you know is there is going to be very helpful because your organization represents some of Canada's finest companies with really the brightest minds. And that's who we need. Um, we're not going to be, uh, we're, we don't need to take any glory for any of the work that's here. We just need to reach out to Canadians to get the best ones at the table. Um, part of what we hope will be our charm uh, is that we have the ability to reach into a number of different groups and bring them together where they may not ever have sat at the same table. And it's about time that we do that um, because I think we're just facing, uh, we're facing um, a problem that we've just not seen of this magnitude before and it impacts everybody it's not just about the auto sector it's not just about manufacturing it really has hit home in a number of ways i think it, what's important too angela that i know you know this uh, government is going to solve all the problems they're just not they can't and nor should they so i think uh, it may be the public sector, it may be the NGOs, it may be the business sector, but when we put everybody together around that table, I think everyone's going to play their part. So I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to working with you, Angela, and your organization. You've got to say hi to my friends over there. I will do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.